Hello everyone, my name is Ian Lamont. I'm the author of Lean Media, available from leanmedia.org. Today I'm going to be talking about using Amazon Seller to m monitor the amount of inventory that you have for both the manufacturer fulfilled items as well as Amazon FBA, which is the Amazon fulfilled items. So I have an Amazon Seller uh, Pro Seller account. I'm paying some fee every month to use this. It gives some extra features that the free account doesn't have. And usually when you're looking at inventory, a lot of people just click on the inventory page up here. And this shows all of their inventory mixed together. This shows the FBA inventory, and I can tell it's FBA because I can't change that number, as well as the manufacturer fulfilled inventory, which is right here. So I'm selling this product called a Word 2016 Reference and Cheat Sheet. I have 28 available. I can change that to 30 just by typing in the number and hitting save. That's pretty basic to do that. Now. Uh, however, if you have FBA inventory, it's a different story. You have to start using the inventory tools for FBA products, and those are available under Inventory, Manage FBA Inventory. So let's check that out. Okay, here are the products that I have as FBA. Um, I can change things like the pricing here. It also shows the inventory I have available. Um, as you may know, Amazon FBA, they have a couple different categories here, unfulfillable, reserved, inbound, and available. Uh, I think I have some products that are, are inbound right here. Let's click on that, see if it's there. Yeah, so uh, here's, I have available 63 and reserved 62. That's because I just sent a shipment to Amazon's warehouse in New Jersey, and they're still being processed. But this number, these 62 here, uh, these will be become available in the next few weeks and it shows I have a total of 125. One thing that's important to remember actually about FBA inventory is that when you send it into them and even when they receive it, it doesn't instantly become available. Uh, they have to do some back-end processes to make the products available to their warehouse staff and their ordering system so things can be sent out quickly. And I've found that this can take sometimes a week or two, uh, especially during high seasons, which is toward the end of the year. So keep that in mind. When you're sending something to Amazon, um, you know you may be sending it UPS ground and it arrives at the facility in three days. It may not be available for people to buy for two weeks or maybe even a little bit longer during peak periods. So just keep that in mind when you're doing the um, managing your Amazon inventory. Now, one other thing I wanted to show you about the inventory, this is not really a complete picture of what's going on. Um, there's a couple other inventory tools that you can use. Uh, in inventory reports, uh, managing shipments, that's just to kind of track where stuff is going on or to see other information about a shipment. Uh, but I like to use this inventory planning tool to kind of get a picture of how things are doing. And when you come, when you come to the tool at first, it'll show you a dashboard and it'll show you kind of um, give you some warnings about things that you should uh, restock these products to prevent lost sales. Um, it has an estimate for, whoops, for how many days of supply are available. I don't know why it's deep. Why is it jumping around like that? Okay. Anyways, I think you get the idea. Let me just move this down. All right. Down here, it shows how many days of supply, how many I, I'm recommended to order. Um, for instance, for this product right here, the blank genealogy forms bundle, you know, I've sold 134 units recently and I have 54 days of supply. And it recommends that I have a big order, I make a big order of like 500 units. And actually that, that is in process, so I, I am working on that. So this can be a useful place just to get a, a quick idea of what's going on. But the other area that I like to see of the um, inventory planning is the inventory age page. So let's take a look at that. So this will show how many units, this will show first of all, all the products that I have, inventory age. That means like how long it's been in the inventory, uh, you know, zero to 90 days, 91 to 180 days, um, and even longer than that, including longer than a year. And by the way, the longer that your stuff is there, Amazon starts to charge you fees uh, for keeping it there. So you don't want to have a lot of stuff that's lying in inventory for a long time. And you can see that my inventory age is looking pretty good, actually. I only have one item <laughs> that's been uh, this particular item, uh, these blank pedigree charts that's been in inventory for longer than three months. Um, so that's that's looking pretty good. Also shows you how much space is being used to store it because these basically I just have a couple boxes there at the inventory at the uh, Amazon warehouse. One really cool feature of this particular page, inventory age, is just hovering over the number 
for the last 90, 90 days sold. And actually, it will show you the units sold in different time periods. This is really useful for planning how much you need to order in the future. Because what you can do is you can see that, hey, I've yes, I've sold 427 units in the last 90 days. But look at this. I've sold 136 units in the last uh, month. So this can tell you if like, you know, I only have 100, 427 um, items left in inventory. So I can basically do a little bit of math and say, oh, I'm going to run out in about three months time. And if I want to have an additional three months worth of inventory, I have to order, you know, 136 times times three, which is about 400 to uh, to make that to even that out. So I use this all the time to check to see how products are selling. And sometimes they reveal interesting things like this particular one. Um, it says that I've sold uh, 26 items in the last 30 days. So it's basically one per day. But in the last uh, 60 days, it's only 45 items. So you can see that the, the rate of sales is going down because if it was the same rate, this, this number would be twice, twice that, would be 52. But actually, sales are picking up a little bit. Um, so, and you can see going out even further, over 90 days, I've only so I sold 55. 60 days, I sold 45. So that means three months ago, I only sold 10 items that month, but in the most recent month, it's 26. So I can use this number again to plan for future sales, to tell my manufacturer or to manufacture on my own enough products and send them to Amazon's warehouse to make sure that uh, it's well stocked. One other thing to mention about inventory age and dealing with that, Everything changes the last three months of the year and uh, January as well. That's because that's the peak buying period for people on Amazon. As you know, probably tens of millions or even hundreds of millions of people go to Amazon to buy their, uh, their holiday gifts and uh, your sales may go through the roof. So make sure that you plan to have enough inventory on hand to satisfy all those customers. And I learned the hard way the first year that this happened. I thought I had enough in stock, Amazon FBA, and I didn't. It ran out. Uh, so that was kind of a hard lesson to learn. I'm not going to make that mistake again. But uh, when it comes to inventory age, keep in mind that if you're planning for, for uh, let's say that you know Christmas is coming up in two months, this number here, 90 days, this is how many you sold in the past three months, that number may not be enough to satisfy demand during the holiday period. So you should think about doubling, tripling, or or basically thinking about how many you will likely sell during that period. That depends on the product, depends on the competition, depends on the pricing, depends on your advertising, lots of factors. But don't assume that because you sold 427 in the last 90 days, that will be enough to satisfy demand in the next 90 days if it's during a peak period such as uh, the holidays. For more information on how to get the most on great and making great media products or uh, selling them or interacting with customers or learning from your customers, check out my book, Lean Media, available from leanmedia.org. Thank you so much for watching.